Jesus. So come on, give God praise. He sacrificed his life. Even in this season that we're in, where we commemorate that he went to the grave for us. When you think about what God has done for us, even in the turmoil and everything that's going on, not only in our city, but throughout our world, when you think of the goodness of Jesus and how he brought us up, how he sacrificed his life, not for us as a group, but for you individually. Tap at yourself. Say he died for me. This is an interactive church. I'm looking at y'all visitors. Pat yourself. I'm going to mess with you today. Tell me he died for me. And if y'all home folks, tell me, pat yourself. He died for me. Hallelujah. It's so easy for us when we're in a, a, a group setting. And somebody say, lift your hand and praise the Lord. Or they say, tell your neighbor this or tell your neighbor that. But think of, just forget about everybody else and think of what God did for you. For you in the And when I say, I think of the grace of Jesus and all he's done for me, my soul cries out. And sometimes I have to shed a tear. Because I was, I was, I was the chief of sinners. Amen. But God saw fit to let me come up in here and change my life. And now I'm on a straight road. Come on, give God praise. Amen. We've had our call to worship, and we thank God for the praise and the for those that have gone forth. Amen. You know, sometimes we come in church, and, and we know we're in a good place, but we don't even say stuff to folk, because we're so used to getting with our people that we know, and, and we thank God for our visitors in the house. Come on, King and King, let's go to our visitors. Amen. I know it has affected everybody. Amen. And, and I lived in Pittsburgh 40 years ago and I was in the job there. And I could go in any borough in this city and nobody bothered me. But now we, we go outside the doors of the church and we're apprehensive about the people that we see that live next door. Because the world is in such a terrible state. But the Bible declares that if my people which are called by my name humble themselves and pray. Seek my face. Turn from their wicked ways. He said, then will I hear from heaven. So it's up to us. Look at your neighbor and tell them it's up to you. That we change the face of this planet. Amen. It's up to us. The world is not going to do it. Even in the political arena we see. I was, in, I was living in Chicago in 1968 when they had the Democratic National Convention in we weren't allowed to get on the bus to go downtown during that time. But never have we seen in political events, we see it in other countries, but not in America, where people are fighting. You, know, you choose who you want to choose, I choose who I want to choose. But we ain't got to fight. But even in the house of God, you believe this way, I believe that way, and there's a divide. Look at your neighbor and tell them that the common denominator is Jesus. Yeah. I don't care if you're Catholic. I don't care if you're Presbyterian. I don't care if you're Episcopalian. Man, our common denominator is Jesus. And there's a song, and it's an old song to me. But I just want to, and maybe you might not know it. If you do know it, you can help me out with it. It says, when we are divided, I can hear God crying. Says, and I won't be a part of breaking his heart anymore. I just can't do it anymore. He says, so brother, I commit my love to you. Simple song. Sister, I commit my love to you. And I just wonder if you could help me a little bit. See how it says, when we are divided, I can hear him cry. And I won't be a part of breaking his heart anymore. I can't do it anymore. So, brother, I commit my love. Sister, I commit my love to you. Come on, help me. 
that crazy person who's pulling that gun on you. Be nice to everybody. Come on, give God praise. Amen. I see our choir. Amen. Sister Tisha mentioned about last night. If you missed last night, y'all ready? Yes. Amen. Uh -huh. If you missed last night, I don't know if Sister Shannon got CD, DVD.
verse 7 through 11. with 
walk about two miles, and they say, sit down, Mr. Bond. They let me pedal about two miles, and they say, take a breath, Mr. Bond. But when I think of what God has done for me, the doctor said, a third of the people that have your problem never make it here, they die. A third of the people are able to live with medication and stuff like this is in my chest.
He was born into sin. So that he could live in sin. I thank you for taking that thing for me. Because to be honest, I don't know if I can do it. But I thank you for loving me and loving you and loving you and loving you and loving you.
and raise it on that support. Third day. Third day. Neither know 
what. Neither know we what to do, but our eyes are upon thee. And all of Judah stood before the Lord with their little ones, their wives, and their children. Then upon Jehazel, the son of Zechariah, the son of Benaiah, the son of Jael, the son of Metaniah, a Levite of the son of Ahaz, came the Spirit of the Lord in the midst of the congregation. And he said, Hearken ye, all Judah, and ye inhabitants of Jerusalem, and thou king Jehoshaphat. Thus says the Lord unto you, Be not afraid, nor dismayed, by reason of this great multitude, for the battle is not yours, but God's. And the word of the Lord is already
words. Come on. We want to take scriptures yeah. and fit it around our lives. Right. Amen. And then we want to twist it up right. to mean something to make you feel comfortable with what you're doing. fatigues on today. Uh -huh. I'm with somebody. Yeah. Because we're, we're in a battle. Amen. Amen. And we got to be ready to fight. Amen. Brother Stacy went on off this morning. Come on somebody. He took it to another level. Amen. Yeah. He already preached. Amen somebody. Yeah. He already preached. Amen. But a lot of us were single. We couldn't hear everything he was saying. We was trying to say He had one thing, he had he, he had fear. And we know that God hasn't given us the spirit of fear. Amen. But a power and a sound mind. We know that's in Bible also. But the fleshly side of us, amen. Not the spiritual side, but the fleshly side of us will have fear. Amen. We will have worry. And um, as long as we're in this world, which is imperfect. It, it's going to happen. There's nobody in here that has not had fear at some time That's right. or another in their life. That's right. Nobody in here. And if you have it, you will. Amen. Amen. I, can't, I don't even believe the kids ain't had fear because if, if, if you're going to get a whooping, <laughs> and fear comes to mind. Amen. I remember back in the day, amen, I didn't get too many whoopings. I was a goody two shoes.
knows who their deacon is, then you can come to the elders because that's what the word of God says. And none of the elders will turn you away. Amen. So if you are coming through the, for the same thing, because that means you need some personal prayer. <laughs> if you're coming for the same thing over and over and over again, because my God is an answering God. Yeah.
23, he proclaimed a fast throughout all of Judah. Amen. So we have a Wednesday morning boost at 6 a.m. And on our Wednesday morning boost, I have called a fast under the unction of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Um, for those on that call. But then I would bring it over to the congregation to ask everyone to take a part of the fast. Because when you with fasting, there's prayer. You, you fast and you pray. Amen. So you're giving up something. Come on, somebody. And it kind of represents God giving up himself for our sins. So you're giving up something. That's what fasting is. Yeah. Amen. For a period of time. And, and you're praying to get a, a closer connection with God. But at the same time, when we come all together on one accord, then there's power. There's power when we come together yeah. on one accord. Yeah. So that's why I tell you that it's the Wednesday, uh, Wednesday midweek boost. But I asked you to join in as well. And some of you choose to, and some of you not. But you really should. doesn't mind, but she has uh, I mean, we're aware of that, but she did whatever she could do for that fast. Don't say that you can't do nothing, or you just refuse to do it, especially when you're asked to do it. And, and it has nothing to do with me per se. This will help you. And then it will help us as a ministry, as a family, as a body. Give me and ask him to 
blot out every transgression. Blot out every iniquity. Amen. Yeah. That it will not. I, I used to say that it won't rise up and against me in judgment day, but now I don't want it to rise up against me at all. <laughs> don't rise up against me at all. all right. Come on, somebody. Amen. Amen. So you always have to confess your sins, even during your fasting and, and your praying. And sometimes, uh, we, we've done so many, I can speak for only me, that you might forget if you even confessed it. So I ask the Lord, reveal unto me if there's something that I haven't confessed before you. Because I want to confess everything yeah. before him. Amen? Everything. Not some things, but everything. And I want him to know that I'm so, so, so sincere. So they all assembled together in the court of the temple and they joined in prayer. Mm -hmm. And they gathered themselves together and they asked the Lord for help. Out of all of the cities of Judah, not some of it, the word of God says all. If you read the scripture, it says all. They all came to seek the Lord. Come on, somebody. Not just the Wright family, not just the Carter family. Come on, not just the Smith, Smith family, not just the Webb family. Come on, somebody. Not just the Harris family, not just the Vaughn family. Come on, somebody. But they all, every one of them, every city, every family in every city, they came to them. Come on, somebody. That's power. They met in the house of the Lord. Some, of, some people want to stay away from the house. The house is important. Our example is Jesus. He went to the temple. So we're supposed to follow his example. Amen. Christ like. That means we're supposed to be like Jesus. As much as we possibly can be. He like Jesus. He went to the temple. So what makes us think that we shouldn't come to the temple? Which is the church. What makes us think it's okay to sit home and listen to T.G. Jakes? I have nothing against T.G. Jakes. Or it's okay to sit home and listen to Bishop Paul Sylvester Moore. Or Eddie Long, come on somebody. Or whoever you listen to, Joyce Myers, come on somebody. But it makes you think it's okay to do that. It, it's not. Because you can listen to them after service. You can listen to them after service.
I will take yours. Because the devil is on our track. Yeah. And he's not going to leave us alone. That's right. Come on, somebody. Because his job is to rob, kill, and destroy. So he will attack you at every leading side. Yes, he will. So it's important that we have on the whole armor of God. It's important that we intercede on behalf of one another because everybody in here is under attack. Whether right. you're a member of King of Kings or not, you're under attack. Yeah. Amen? Amen? So it's important that you come together, we come together as a family, and we intercede on behalf of one another. Yeah. And yes, we can pray, because I pray for y'all even when I'm not here. And you know what I'm saying? You can pray for people even when you're not here. Eh? But it's good when we come together as one body of Christ. One body of Christ. Because yeah. we draw strength off of one another. And then our power increases. Right. Come on, somebody. It's just like when you plug in your phone, your cell phones, and everybody calls somebody's got one plugged in now. But you plug in your cell phones. Because the battery done ran down or it's running down. We got to plug into one another. How many of you heard that you need to hang around with blessed folk? Yeah. Some of us need to change our friends, need to change our partners. Yeah. Come on, somebody. Yeah. It's, it, it's so important to find somebody that's blessed to hook up, yeah. hook up to. Every time, every since, like, oh, you'll hear Overseer say, ever since we hooked up the uh, full gospel, amen? And Overseer didn't always get treated great in full gospel. Don't get me wrong. Change. We're still changing. In the next year. 
year, or this year, our international goes to shift. Right. They changed last year, but our state conference will still be on change because we're still on last year. Uh -huh. This is our 22nd, and this will be their 23rd. Right. Amen. We're behind them. So, we have to change our mindset. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. Yeah. So we can shift into the next level that God will have us to shift into. Amen. So we can check that stuff at the door. Amen. Amen. They came within reach of that reach of that promise, yeah. which God made in the answer um, to Solomon's prayer in Second Chronicles seven fifteen, when He said, "Now my eyes shall be open and my ears attend unto the prayer that is made in this place." That's the Lord talking. Yeah. Amen. So when we come together on one accord and we're fasting and praying, then He can hear us. He can hear our prayers. Amen. Overseers, pray to turn here. Come on, y'all say it real loud. Yeah. 
arms, but our heart is so big. We try to love real hard. Amen. And, and, and anybody that's looking for a church home, come on, y'all. We're going to stand up and get up out of here. I, I was long, man. I'm sorry.